Hello and welcome to my review of the Striking Scorpions for Eldari or Eldar for Warhammer 40,000 from Games Workshop. Now these particular 10 Striking Scorpions were included in the Kill Team Salvation box set over on the left, um, which would have cost you uh, £80. They are now up for pre-order uh, this week uh, for £45 for 10. I was thinking that Games Workshop would price them at £37.50 uh, for five, much like they do with the uh, Howling Banshees aspect warriors, but in, in a change of um, events uh, that they've actually priced them at £45, which is a lot, you know, um, for, for 10 miniatures. Uh, and you do get five that are twins, but you know, it's still cheaper uh, than if you were to um, pick up two boxes of five at uh, at the other price point. Um, you know, you're, you are saving £30, but that's a perceived value. Um, it, you know, you're not actually saving that amount of money. Uh, it's just that Games Workshop have priced these at um, £45 for, uh, for 10. So in a way, you're having to pay more for that entry um, to get the Striking Scorpions and as an Eldar um, player and collector it's whether you feel um, you need 10 as opposed to 5 because the, the unit is typically a 5 man squad. squad. Without me going on for too long uh, the format of this review uh, will be as follows I'll go through uh, all of these models individually um, I'll talk about how easy they were to build I think I did two I built them in two live streams, which was about five hours or so um, for all 10. Then I'll look at all of their spare parts, of which you do get a, a decent amount. Not as many as the Scouts, I don't think, but still. Then I'll go through some size comparisons with other uh, Eldar models. And finally, I'll go through all of their rules. Um, and the rules I will be using will be the, I say, 10th edition rules um, from the Warhammer 40,000 app. And they are different um, than the rules from the 9th edition uh, codex, this beautiful Eldari codex, um, which is featured on the channel, one of the best um, codexes out there. Uh, they're yet to get their 10th edition um, book, but no doubt it will be another um, almost 200 page monster uh, of a book. So I won't be using the, the rules as such from that book, but I will be uh, using the rules from the, the app. And I think the 10th edition rules are sort of free on the app for a specific army until their um, army book comes out. And then you're forced to buy the, uh, uh, the book to gain access to the, the rules digitally. You know my thoughts on that. Uh, I think the rules should be free. Um, let's have a look at these um, Striking Scorpions individually then. I would say, first off, these are probably one of the best looking Aspect Warriors um, Games Workshop have produced and definitely the best looking Striking Scorpions from what I can remember. Uh, and I'm going back um, to the Scorpions of like the 90s and early 2000s and things, you know, the metal models. Um, let's, let's kick off with the um, Exarch. Very nice looking Exarch, um, uh, fantastic mini. Um, you've got a number of options. You can have him with a biting blade, with dual chainsaws, with this chainsaw and scorpion's claw combo. Um, not really anything stopping you from using this arm uh, on another st standard striking scorpion. Um, that is, is of course, uh, possible. Um, you know, you can can do that if, if you wish. Uh, but nice looking mini. You've got the um, sort of shuriken pistol inbuilt onto his, uh, his claw there. He's on the, the um, tactical rock. Every single one of these striking scorpions has got a tactical rock. So, <laughs> and because you're getting um, two sets of five twins, it might be worth either covering up that rock or removing it off completely and finding something else for the striking scorpion to stand on. But anyway, that's the Exarch. You get three different options with that one. That's quite cool. And remember, you can have an Exarch per five striking scorpions. So you could really have built two in this set. Um, then let's have a look at uh, the, the, the miniatures um, together. So this was sort of the twin of the Exarch. You can tell with that tactical rock, it's got a bit of a fancy one. Um, this is the alternative build for it um, with the shuriken pistol out there and the chainsaw uh, out there. Um, they're quite straightforward to build. They are a bit finicky. Um, 
you know, there's mold lines on the legs, uh, mold lines on the chainsaw, but the mold lines aren't too bad. If you've watched me build them in the live streams, they're, they're absolutely fine to build. Um, let's carry on with the sort of twin theme, if we can. So these two are, are twins. Um, and what I've done is in the instruction guide, it shows you to build them exactly the same. So with the shuriken pistol out and this particular chain sword, I've gone against that because I like variety in my miniatures and I don't like lots of miniatures that look exactly the same, especially in um, you know small uh, forces like this. With um, horde armies and things, you can't really tell that much, like termagants and hormagants and gene stealers even. But um, but definitely with these sort of elite troops and things, you you can. Um, of course, there are some gaps in the the shoulder armor which even though i put some um tamia on that still needs a bit of a sand obviously you can't do it straight away because you mess up the glue but i will go over that before i spray so if you see any of those those gaps on the shoulder i will clean them up um but yeah same leg pose and torso but if you cut the um plug off the bottom of the head you can move the head in any position you like and if you use the um, pistol and chainsaw from one of the other sets of twins you're going to get two models that look very different you know, other than that seeing it rock and the legs, they're gonna look different. And that's what I would suggest um, you do with this, this set. Um, don't buy two sets if you can avoid it, just buy the one, one is all you need really. Um, this is another set of twins. Again, similar sort of head pose, I guess, um, but the weapons make them look very different. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with, uh, with those two. And then on the bigger tactical rocks, this were two totally different poses, um, but the same legs, the same um, tactical rock. This one, I like this one, sort of moving around a corner maybe, firing upwards, very, very cool pose. This one, you know, moving forward, about to swipe, I don't know, but yeah, nice, nice couple of poses there. And then I think these two, this one, Bit of an odd pose that one, but this one with a pistol uh, aiming forward. Uh, so um, I might have used these arms from, you know, obviously the other the other Exarch because that looks very similar. Um, and then this one, or should I say these two? Again, bit of an odd pose for that one, especially with that chain sword. But this one is one of the sort of legit poses that they that they went for. Maybe I could have swapped that chainsaw out. That's probably the weakest pose out of all of them. Um, and then you get the two statues, which I don't really count as minis. Uh, you, you've had these with all the other aspect warriors, um, even the rangers, I think. I think with the rangers. But yeah, there are these. They're quite straightforward. There's just one piece each. They don't really do anything, but they're just there for, I don't know, um, aesthetic reasons. But uh, but there you go. That's uh, the striking scorpions. Um, nice minis uh you know if you can um, customize them with the different pistols and chainsaws that they come with um speaking of spare parts you do get a lot and you actually get an option of having uh, i think all of them without uh helmets on or at least face plates that is and uh, these are all the spare parts so you get a biting blade probably get two biting blades actually um yeah, so two biting blades. So you could have two X arts with biting blades. Um, you get number of different chainsaws. Uh, oh, there's another one there. More chainsaws. Um, this is more for the the X arc though. You can tell which ones are for the X arc because they have um, little uh, sockets there for the uh, the shuriken pistols to go in. Get a fancy looking um, helmet. I probably would use this on a third set, but um, there's no real point in me getting a third set at the moment. And then you get these um, helmetless heads, uh, I'd say. Look at those. So you can have them with, they've still got the face mask thing on, but they just haven't got that top part for their head. Um, and some different chest plates, I guess, for the Exarchs. Um, it's nice that the Exarchs come with different heads, different face plates. You get the Mandy Blasters, um, which I think are optional, I think, for some of them, um, which which obviously go under the 
the, the heads and yeah more more power plants I think they are and chain swords and not many shuriken pistols I think I've only got one extra sort of shuriken pistol there out of all of them um, and different um, sort of dreadlock type features um, which would go on the uh, helmetless heads I think so yeah you get some different dreadlock sort of features and a different head there as well so and the pouch you know they've got sockets for all of the um, grenades and uh, magazines to go on and then there's a little holstered uh, shuriken pistol there as well so yeah a fair number so yeah a fair number of um, spare parts there not as many as, as the scouts though okay so I've got a few comparisons here first of all um, let's compare them to old 1992 well that's the base anyway metal uh, striking scorpion uh, I wanted to give you a sort of a comparison with these they are bigger um, it's hard to say because none of them are none of them are like not on a tactical rock but they are bigger it is noticeable that they're bigger um, if you look at where their torsos are the torsos are a little bit higher and then the torsos themselves are bigger and then their heads are not much in it with the heads but length of the arms not much in it with the length of their arms but then the chain swords are a fair bit bigger like if you if you go from there there's a there's a bit of a dis, there's a bit of a uh, discrepancy there they're quite a few millimeters um a couple of centimeters longer so yeah they they are bigger um, than the old ones like the very old ones um but it's not as a uh, as much of a difference as like the scouts and the um, the new scouts the primary scouts um so if you did have the old scorpions these metal ones i think you'd be all right just just um these new ones definitely have more detail i guess they have more you know pose ability um with the more options whereas the metal ones were just you know solid um mono pose minis i think um i didn't have any of the fine cast ones so i can't show you any comparisons with those um next to like an eldar guardian um this is just one i've got painted um but they are similar sort of size to normal guardians i think the newer guardians are again very similar size i couldn't find any of the other new um eldar minis other than like the avatar so um apologies for that uh, this is one of the older banshees they're very similar um, size to the new ones so that's where the scorpions sort of measure up next to those that might be a better um, comparison there for you um with the size of, the, of these but yeah if you've got the old um scorpions they'll work fine um there's not going to be too much of an issue you could still use them so be interesting to find out how many old school scorpions you do have but if you've only got five then yeah you could have three units of five or one unit of ten and one unit of five um compared to sort of a larger eldar model we've got the avatar of cain right here which obviously dwarfs uh, all of them a uh, fantastic model i think it won model of the year didn't it as well um for 2022 um then we've got a wraith knight um, which is a very very tall model um, but it gives you some idea of how how big a Wraith Knight is compared to these and then compared to the usual 40k minis I like to compare um, units to uh, we've got a standard sort of Space Marine uh, they're still smaller than a standard Space Marine um, Sly Marbo they're probably going to be similar height Sly Marbo might be a little bit taller and then of course Primaris is going to um be way way taller than these scorpions so if you're up against primaris primaris is still going to be a fair bit bigger than these which is great 
um, you know that's what you what you want okay this is my part of the review where i will go through all of their 10th edition rules uh, found in the uh, warhammer app uh, their points cost um for five of them uh, would cost you 75 points um or for 10 of them which is one x arc and five to nine uh, scorpions that would be 150 so right here you're seeing 150 points worth of of uh minis so we'll go through the stat line of the striking scorpion x arc first as i say the unit composition is one striking scorpion x arc and between four and nine striking scorpions every model is equipped with a shuriken pistol scorpion chainsword and mandy blasters I'll go through the profile of the Striking Scorpion X arc first of all. Uh, movement is 7 inches, toughness is 3, save of 3 plus, 2 wounds, leadership 6 plus, and objective control 1. For the Striking Scorpions, their movement speed is the same at 7, seven inches, uh, toughness is 3, save of 3 plus, 1 wound, leadership 6 plus, and objective control 1. So the only thing that the X arc is getting there, uh, just on that profile, is uh, uh, the extra wound. But, it's, um, but they are quite squidgy with the Toughness 3, but they do have that nice save of 3+. plus. Uh, they do have an Invulnerable save, uh, which is quite nice. I'm not sure whether they used to have an Invulnerable save, but they've got an Invulnerable save there of 5+. Plus. And their weapons, let's start off with the Shuriken Pistol, which they're all equipped with. It's a 12-inch range, 1 attack, Ballistic Skill 3+, plus, Strength 4, AP-1, Damage 1, Assault Pistol Weapon. It's alright, I guess. You know, it's nice that it's Strength 4 and AP-1. And then, and then their Scorpion Chainsword is a melee weapon. It's uh, four attacks, three plus to hit, strength four, AP zero, damage one, and it's got sustained hits one. Then we'll go on to the Exarch's weapons. So the Striking Scorpion Exarch Shuriken Pistol can be replaced with one Scorpion Claw, and the Exarch Shuriken Pistol and Scorpion Chainsword can be replaced with one Biting Blade. So the Scorpion's Claw, uh, which is synonymous uh, to the Striking Scorpions, it's a, uh, it has a ranged uh, weaponry, um, so it's just like a, a Shuriken Pistol, pretty much. Uh, it's a 12-inch range, 2 attacks, 3 plus to hit, Ballistic Skill 3 plus, Strength 4, AP minus 1, Damage 1, Assault Pistol. Um, so you're basically getting an extra shot there with the Scorpion's Claw. Um, and it also has a melee uh, ability um, where you get four attacks, uh, weapon skill four plus, strength eight, AP minus two, damage two. So that's nice, you know, it's not like a double the strength where it used to be sort of if there was strength three, you get strength six. It's actually a straight up strength eight. Um, and it is sustained hits one. The other the other weapon you can give him is the Biting Blade, uh, which is a melee weapon. Uh, attacks 5, weapon skill 3+, plus, strength 5, AP minus 1, damage 2, and sustained hits 1. So it's really whether you want to go for 4 attacks uh, at the strength 8, or you want to go for 5 attacks at the strength 5, AP minus 1. I think it's a good trade-off to forgo uh, an attack for that bump up in uh, strength and armor penetration. Um, but you might not hit as many with that, you know, weapon skill 4 plus. Abilities, uh, they've got Infiltrators and Strands of Fate. Infiltrators is a core ability, and you can set it up, you can set the uh, unit up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches away from enemy deployment zone and all enemy models. And Strands of Fate is a faction ability where you roll 6d6. And you can keep rolling um, until you're satisfied with the results. War gear abilities, they've got Mandy Blasters. Uh, melee weapons equipped uh, by the bearer have the Devastating Wounds ability when targeting units without the monster or keyword or monster or vehicle keywords. Pretty nice. And speaking of keywords, they have infantry, striking scorpions, Eldari. So there you go, that's the Striking Scorpions. Uh, they're a nice uh, unit. The main reason you get them uh, is their decent number of attacks at a good weapon skill. Um, whether those attacks do anything or not is, is obviously questionable. You know, with nine standard um, Scorpions, if you manage to get them all into combat, you're gonna get 36 uh, attacks there, plus um, the Scorpion's Claw, which would be another four attacks so you're looking at about 40 attacks and the strength is four which isn't too bad it's just they only have that damage one and they don't have an armor penetration so uh you know if your opponent 
like for a space marine equivalent like a primaris if they're toughness four and they have their save of three plus um it's just how many of those attack and they have two wounds then it's just how many of those attacks are gonna be able to to cut through um heavily armored um units against 10 primaris which is obviously 20 wounds i think they're gonna struggle trying to cut them down but against a unit of five space marines or even five Terminators, for instance, um, just the weight of those attacks is going to wear the enemy down, especially um, with the addition of the devastating wounds from the Mandy, that the Mandy Blasters um, also buff them with. What do you guys think of the Striking Scorpions? I always preferred Howling Banshees over Striking Scorpions, although they were lighter armoured and they did have those power swords. Uh, I thought they were a, a, a better trade-off. Um, I would always, even with their save of 3+, plus, they are squidgy with toughness 3, so I'd always um, try and put them in a, a Falcon or some kind of carrier. Uh, I think when I ran five of them, I would either infiltrate them, um, either I would set them up as sort of scouts, or I would put them in a, a Falcon or something just to give them that added, added protection. What do you guys think of the Striking Scorpions, both the minis and the rules? Uh, please do put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Avatar Protects.